Uh, welcome to this lecture on uh, um, sound and structural vibration. Last time we had started looking at the model problem, we had posed it and we decided to look at the uncoupled part of the problem ok and the uncoupled part looked like this. we were desiring V of x which became equal to minus i omega f by twice pi b integral minus infinity to infinity e to the power of i k x d k by k fourth minus k p fourth. Here we decided to use uh, principles of complex variables and I told you about the contour integration ok. So, now we are going to integrate this using principles of contour integration. So, let me show you the contour and the singularities of this function ok. This, this now k becomes complex ok, k enters the complex domain. So, far k was real, but now k enters the complex domain ok. So, what, what are we trying to do? So, now uh, the what we have for the integral is a contour integral have a contour integral e to the power of i k x by k fourth minus k p fourth d k, k is now complex this is what we are going to do ok. But I have excluded the constants in front we will add them later. So, this is going to be equal to the integral we want from minus infinity to infinity ok on the real axis plus there will be a portion from a contour and it is going to be equal to twice pi i times the sum of the residues at whatever singularities we have. So, let us look at the singularities of this function once k has become complex that means where does it blow up that means zeros of the denominator, zeros of the denominator, denominator ok. It is not very difficult to see that k is equal to plus minus k p are singularities and plus minus i k p are also singularities. So, if I plot those I have minus k p, I have plus k p, I have plus i k p and minus i k p ok. So, these are the singularities. Now, the problem is deliberately very symmetric ok. So, if I am going to just describe the problem we have an infinite plate and we have a line force acting at x equal to 0. So, it is very symmetric. So, there will be a propagating wave that way and a decaying wave that way, a propagating wave that way and a decaying that way. That is why we have 4 roots ok, 4 singularities that is why we have 4 roots ok. 
and therefore which are the ones to include we have i k p here we have k p here we have minus k p here minus i k p here so there is an x greater than 0 solution there is an x less than 0 solution that are going to be symmetric so we are going to attempt x equal to 0 solution and therefore we have to choose two of the roots we have to choose two roots okay so let's see now my displacement let's say is as some amplitude a it has minus i omega t time dependence okay then let's say it has plus i uh, k x okay now k here is anything a certain wave number a certain wave number okay so i am going to substitute each of these so i have a e to the power of minus i omega t plus i i am going to substitute first k p okay this means a forward propagating wave forward propagating wave in the positive x direction ok one should know this this sign flip is the indicator once you have a negative here and a positive here that sign flip is an indicator for uh, forward propagation now so k p we have looked at now suppose we look at minus k p so i have a e to the power of minus i omega t plus i but instead of in place of k i put minus k p so minus k p times x ok so which means what this is a e to the power of minus i omega t minus i k p x this is a negative this is a negative propagating wave that means in the negative x direction this wave is going leftward this wave is going rightward starting what x equal to 0 my source or line force is at x equal to 0 so this one this one represents a wave moving positive x and this one represents a wave in the negative moving x so minus k p is not to be chosen plus k p to be chosen should be part of my contour ok even within the mathematics some physical um, aspects come in our judgment comes in blindly we cannot do the mathematics ok we have to choose a contour and choose the root such, a, such that meaningful results come ok so you can see that having minus k p does not give a meaningful reason for uh, meaningful result for positive x ok similarly if i choose i k p if i put i k p for k what do i get i get let me see a e to the power of minus i omega t plus i and i k p i k p okay this gives me 
a e to the power of minus i omega t minus k p x. What is this? This is a wave decaying in the positive x. As I move in the positive x direction, it decays away. So, that is what I have drawn here, it decays away, which is possible. Okay. So, i k is equal to i k p should be included. The last choice is what k is equal to minus i k p. So, that gives me a e to the power of minus i omega t plus i and in place of k I put minus i k p x. So, minus i and i give me plus 1. So, I get a e to the power of minus i omega t e to the power k p x. So, this starting at x equal to 0 blows up to infinity at x equal to infinity is not as admissible. Okay. Such results are not physical. So, it is not as admissible. So, this is not admissible. So, what is admissible? K p, k equal to k p is admissible, k equal to plus i k p is, I am sorry. plus i k p is admissible. So, any contour I choose, these are the two roots that should be included. Okay. So, now the contour I choose is I come from negative infinity, I come slightly above, okay. I cross over here, I include plus i k plus k p in my contour. Okay. Then I go around, I go off to infinity. At infinity, I take a semicircle. I come back and meet. Okay. Come back and meet. Now, this is one way of looking at it by taking a contour that is slightly above the real axis here and slightly below the real axis here. The other way typically done in engineering is that every root has a little bit of damping. Okay. We are doing undamped analysis in a, my plate equation or acoustic wave equation there is no damping, but all systems have some damping that means the roots are damped that means they will have imaginary portions. Okay. So, this k p can be you know given an imaginary portion such that it moves into this. Okay. This minus k p can be given an imaginary portion such that it moves downward. Okay. So, then I move straight away along the real axis okay, where automatically my plus k p is within the contour, minus k p is outside the contour and they have been given a very small epsilon level damping. Then after the answer is computed, I send epsilon to 0. Do it that way also. Okay. So, in any way what is included is plus i k p and plus k p for computing answers in the positive x direction and this is the shape of the contour. Okay. So, what has happened is that the portion I wanted minus infinity to plus infinity is included. However, I have ended up with a contour on a semicircular arc. Okay. So, that has to be evaluated otherwise we would not get the full answer. So, we need some theorems now. We need some theorems from complex variables. Okay. So, let us see. So, 
So, one theorem is the Cauchy residue theorem, Cauchy residue theorem. Okay. So, I will just write it here. For a function, for a function f of z analytic everywhere in the complex plane except at a finite number of points z 1, z 2 through z n lying inside a closed contour C 0, the following relation holds. What is that? The integral closed contour integral over this C 0 of this function f z is equal to twice pi i times the sum of the residues okay, of this function f of z at its isolated singularities. That is one result we will need. Okay. The other result is called Jordan's lemma. Jordan's lemma. Okay. It says that if f of z happens to be of this form g of z e to the power uh, i a z with a positive a being a positive number. Then further if G of Z uniformly tends to zero. on a circular arc as the radius tends to infinity, then the integral over that circular arc C 
of this function f of z dz or in turn which is same as integral over the circular arc c g of z e to the power of i a z dz is equal to 0. Okay. So, these are the two theorems we will need. Okay. So, now let us see we have v of x what I need uh, minus i omega f by twice pi b integral minus infinity to infinity e to the power of i k x by k fourth minus k p fourth d k. Okay. Here k from if you want to take Jordan's theorem k plays the role of z and x positive plays the role of a. Okay. So, now we are I am as I said earlier we will keep the constants outside for the moment we will think about this integral. Okay. So, we are going to replace it with a contour integral. Okay. Let us keep the same variables, but k has become complex, k has become complex d k. So, that is going to involve the real portion of the inter in integral which I want okay. plus an integral over a contour whose radius tends to infinity. Okay. So, e to the power of i k x by k fourth minus k p fourth d k and that should be equal to twice pi i times the residues of this function whatever it is at i k p and k p. And what did we say the contour we are choosing is we now choose to go straight on the real axis you go on the real axis I am drawing it separately so that you can see I go off to infinity. So, my k p is inside i k p is inside okay. and I come I close the value close the contour at minus infinity. So, I have the portion I want the real integral here I have ended up with an extra portion over here. Okay. Now, if you look at it this in the in the Jordan theorem this portion looks like e to the power of i a z and 1 over k fourth minus k p fourth looks like g of z okay. and k is the complex variable taking the role of z. So, as my semicircular arc goes to infinity its radius goes to infinity g of z uniformly tends to 0 that is the Jordan theorem if you recall g of z uniformly tends to 0 on a circular arc as the radius goes to infinity. So, that is true Jordan's lemma applies and this portion is equal to e to the power i a z. Okay. So, therefore, this integral on the circular arc goes to 0 goes to 0. Therefore, the integral I want is simply the sum of 
the two residues at i k p and k p. Okay. So, let us just compute that and see, we have just about enough time. Okay. So, I have let me just recall I have this integral which is minus infinity to infinity e to the power of i k x d k and let me write it in the form of poles k minus k p k plus k p k minus i k p k plus i k p. So, I need the residues at k equal to k p and k equal to i k p. So, we should know how to find residues multiply by the offending term or remove it. So, I have for k equal to k p I have e to the power of i k x by k plus k p k minus i k p k plus i k p evaluated at k equal to k p. Okay. So, that gives me let us see e to the power of i k p x by uh, twice k p into k p square into 1 minus i square which is equal to e to the power of i k p x by 4 k p cube. Similarly, for k equal to i k p, I have e to the power of i k x divided by k plus k p k minus k p k plus i k p evaluated at k equal to i k p. So, this gives me e to the power of minus k p x divided by um, k p square into i plus 1 into i minus 1 into twice i k p. Okay. So, let us see what this is e to the power of minus k p x by uh, <clears throat> i square minus 1. So, first of all k p cube or twice i k p cube into i square minus 1 is uh, minus 2 right. So, I have e to the power of minus k p x by minus 4 i k p cube or I take i above i minus k p x by 4 k p cube. Okay. So, uh, we have two residues now. So, the integral I want from minus infinity to infinity e to the power of i k x d k by k fourth minus k p fourth as these two contributions um, is equal to e to the power of i k p x by 4 k p cube or m m and minus k p x by 4 k p cube 
and we left a few constants in the front minus i omega f divided by twice pi b. Okay. So, this is the uh, inverse. So, this is our v of x equal to our v of x. Okay. So, I will close the lecture here. In the next class corresponding to this uncoupled plate vibration velocity, we will find the acoustic response. Thank you.